Making the right choice is important and seemingly selecting the best option is getting to be an increasingly difficult challenge. Luckily, making the correct selections when you're working with your CAD models and assemblies aren't generally life-changing and I can't promise you that the next few minutes will be a moment you look back on with awe necessarily, but what I can promise is that we'll make sure that your daily workflow is more effective, more efficient and more reliable and hopefully save you some valuable time along the way. Hidden away in Creo are many more advanced selection techniques which give you a greater control and a more subtle influence over how your models behave. All of us at one time or another will have gone through the pain of holding down control and selecting multiple edges, nearly finishing and then selecting the wrong one and having to start over and over again. And we'll also be very well aware of making a change to a component's shape and then seeing the dreaded chamfer round or fillet turn red in the model tree as the number of edges change and Creo doesn't manage to read our minds. So over the next few minutes, we'll look at some techniques and useful tips to make sure you make the selection you really need, quickening up your workflow and eliminating those annoying second visits to remedy your models. Now these aren't technically complex, but they're the little hints that aren't always obvious without being shown them. They're bits I've picked up over the years delivering training in universities and industry. Now the first one's really simple, and it's just the difference on how you select, literally which way you create your bounding box with the mouse. On this simple bracket, if I move the mouse from right to left, all of the surfaces I touch are selected, as you can see there. However, moving from left to right, only the aspects I entirely select are highlighted. A quick and easy tip. It works at assembly level too. On my radio, the moves from right to left and left to right give me different results. Useful if you need to pick out small components in a sub-assembly, for example. The second tip is one that's been developed throughout Creo's lifetime, and there's a real advantage in being aware of what it gives you. The selection filter allows you to specify which aspect of your design you require. So if I just need edges for rounds, choose them. Or if I need to pick a vertex for a corner chamfer, it saves a lot of fiddly searching. And with Creo 7 onwards, with the multi-body modelling, you're also able to select bodies by default if required. Great for merging, splitting or intersection. On at assembly level you have got similar control, allowing selection of parts as well as specific geometry. Really useful if you've been sent something to explore or analyse. And you can also override the default selection by creating your own filter in the options section. If you prefer to select parts as your first option, create a filter of your own. It doesn't take away any of the other options, it just gives you your choice first. To do this, go to Options, Selection, and create your own filter. Really good for those who are moving from an older version of Creo and still have their old muscle memory fixed. Selecting surfaces, particularly on a complex design, can be a bit time consuming. There are various ways of gaining control here though, despite them not being entirely obvious. As we've seen, the selection filter does allow you to simply select surfaces, which can save you some time. It still needs some manual work though. An easier way of selecting all surfaces is on the right click menu, and it works great with the multi-body functionality. Once to select the surfaces on all bodies, choose this icon. Just one of the bodies, choose this one. Another useful tool is called the Seed and Boundary Selection. This gives you the ability to select all surfaces up to a boundary. Great for selecting all interior surfaces, for example. Used by plenty of our tool makers and mould design maestros. It's a really simple process. If you think of it as a start and a finish, where you want to start the selection and up to where. Hold down Shift and then let go after selecting the second surface. It's quite satisfying in a funny way. The shift key is also useful when dealing with edges for adding rounds or chamfers. It's a quick method of applying a loop. To do so, select one edge, press shift, and select the surface you want as a round. One of the most frustrating aspects of applying rounds to edges is that you really need to retain the intention of the round and have the ability to change the overall shape while keeping the round. This maintaining of design intent is usually important, and the intent aspect is used in the name of our next selection tip. 
Intent Select is a powerful and easily managed technique of ensuring your designs remain robust and as required. And the more resilient even when major changes are made. The intent word is important as I've said. These advanced selection techniques give you the ability to hold the intended outcome as you explore design changes. It gives you a kind of a smart logic as you develop your ideas. On this little wheel for example, if I want to add rounds to all the internal edges, I pre-select one, click the right mouse button and automatically all the required edges are selected. Then I'll just add a simple reference pattern and I get the full result. Dead easy. And on this simple block, if I need to add aspects to the original driving sketch, if I originally use control to select them separately, the resulting shape doesn't include the rounds. However, if I use the intent select, the rounds are treated as a requirement and then they're added to the revised geometry. Again, a simple but effective change in workflow that gives a nice, well, really pleasing result. Continual pressing of the right button, short, not long clicks, moves through a series of logical and expected selections edges and surface sets, giving you the quick and reliable selection control you need to get your designs done quickly and accurately. It's great for selecting the face you can't see, for example, especially good when placing constraints or connections in assemblies. It's really good for getting that face that's facing away from you. So there we go. Hopefully there's a few useful hints and tips that you've picked up that will help you with your daily workflow. Make sure you have a look at our website where you'll find links to our other webinar series and I'll speak to you again on the next one.